Hello, welcome. We look now at a very concise list of items, quotations, should I say, for Candy and Slim, simply because if you wanted to write about them, the, you know, these five or six quotes, hopefully for each, should do, uh, should sorry, send you well on your way to answering well. So first off, the first thing we find out about Candy is that he's referred to as the old swamper. In old, it kind of shows how little he's going to be listened to around the ranch, because obviously everyone else is of more of a working age, so they may not feel that he pulls his weight obviously he's decrepit which gives him a link to his dog and obviously with age comes uh, an inbuilt decrepitness unfortunately in stereotypes so we presume that of him and his position on the ranch is a very lowly one he's only above crooks and he's only above crooks because of his the color of his skin so this gives us a really indication to why he is quite weak when like Carson tries to bully him and furthermore it gives us some idea into why he wants Lenny and George's dream so badly because he's got nothing else and obviously his position is very low. He needs something better. He also has a lot of insight, shows a lot of experience and here Steinbeck's actually summing up his whole perception on people that he would have seen obviously referenced for, for the creation of this book and obviously to sum up the very um, impermanent nature of the itinerant workers and uh, he says here why he, the guy the guy who just had um, the bank that George is going into why he just quit the way a guy will and the pauses in that sentence are interesting because it's almost like he's a bit surprised he even has to explain it because George and Lenny should know that's just how it goes and the way a guy will obviously is a reference to all men all itinerant workers will end up just leaving quickly because of that um here we have a quotation about his dog and he says I've been around him so much I never notice how he stinks and that's really important because it means or refers to should I say the fact that when you are with someone you do care about them whatever they are whatever their flaws you don't notice them anymore and that's more important the companionship of that poor person is more important but uh, in this setting unfortunately it's not enough to sway the others to b believe in, in keeping the dog but it could also be that you become blind to the failings of something and perhaps they should um, be reduced or removed or taken away uh, for a moment he continued to stare at the ceiling, then he rolled slowly over and faced the wall and lay silent. So we can imagine as the dog dies, something literally within him dies, and that's why he lay silent, staring at the wall like wishing for something better and unable, incapacitated to actually do anything about it. So the fact that the old part is obviously referenced again there, that he, he can't stand up for himself. When he actually goes into, um, when he goes into, excuse me, when he goes into Crooks' bunk, he is embarrassed as he walks in and this demonstrates the social barrier between blacks and whites at the time and also his awareness, his social awareness of that fact. So that's why he walks in embarrassed. When he's having a go at Curly's wife at the end of that, he says, you don't know that we've got our own ranch to go to. So that's a very quick summary of putting in, you know, the whole ranch idea and how much he, he, he wants to get involved with it, etc. The use of the word we is important as well because he's aligned himself wholly there with Lenny and George, even though they're much more of a pair than he is. But he's, it just shows the, the amount and the length to which he wants to actually join their dream. So it's a very, uh, very important, important word, which actually just highlights how much of a unit he thinks they've become. And uh, then when it's when Curly's wife is dead and it seems like the dream has obviously died with her, he's then, and then there's a dash, he doesn't actually want to say the next words because it means a lot of pain for him. It's all off. Candy asks sulkily. So this puts him in a really bad mood. And then he has a huge go at uh, Candy's, Curly's wife. And you could actually look at this and say, well, you know, that's a bit cruel of him, etc. But really what you're looking at here is just the level of frustration. He needs to take it out on someone. And he's so upset by the loss, not only of his dog, but obviously of, of the only dream he had now, because the idea of the dream was kind of a patch or a medicine for losing his dog. But obviously now he's got neither and that's why, excuse me, he calls her a goddamn tramp. You done it, didn't you? Everyone know you'd mess things up. You wasn't no good. And it, it's, all, it's all just frustration. Curly's wife hasn't done anything to Candy voluntarily or, or, or purposefully trying to be mean. She's just tried to make things better for herself or make herself feel better and then unfortunately brought everything uh, crashing down for everyone else.